Hello everyone and welcome back. This is part 2 of our Pentium 3 retro gaming PC build. In part 1 we assembled the machine and did a quick boot test. Now come join me as we finish setting the machine up and of course check out some games. This is Rick's Random Retro. As you may recall from part 1, we had done a quick boot test to make sure the machine was in fact working. While that was successful, we also saw that the BIOS settings were definitely needing to be checked. We can see here that the CPU is shown to be running considerably slower than our desired 700MHz. Also notice the interesting spelling error in the SYTEM up top here. Really, the most important part in this setup here is to configure the CPU speed to match our processor. Once that's done, since most other settings here are auto-detected, I'm going to speed through this here a bit. We do set the boot order incorrectly, I might add, as I have to fix this later, but beyond that, leave most settings default. Next, we boot to our prepared floppy disk and run fdisk to create our partitions. One thing of note here, since we are using a hard drive far larger than Windows 98 was originally designed for, it will not show the full size here or during the formatting process. For now, however, we'll simply create a new primary partition. This is sped up, as due to the size of the drive, this is usually a fairly slow process. After another reboot, we'll go ahead and format our newly partitioned drive. Once again, due to the drive being very large for Windows 98, the format takes a very, very long time to complete. At first I contemplated showing how long it took to go from 0 to even 1%, but even that ended up being on the order of several minutes. I let this sit overnight, so let's just jump to the end. And now, since our format is completed, we're ready to install Windows. Since I recently got a capture device, let's switch over to that instead. And yes, this is from the actual machine, so there's no emulation in play here. And don't worry, I'm not going to make you sit through the entire Windows install process. You know it, you love it, you've probably seen it before. Once again, through the magic of editing, let's skip right to the end. So here we have a freshly installed Windows 98 machine. But one key ingredient is still missing, and that's of course our drivers. I went ahead and copied the ones we need to the C drive, so let's start by installing the chipset drivers for our motherboard. Installing many drivers of course means many reboots. I'll skip those as they come up to speed things up a bit. Next we have the drivers and software needed for our Voodoo 3 video card. Keep an eye on the quite noticeable video quality increase once we have the proper drivers loaded after the first reboot. Now 
now that our video drivers are loaded, we have a few housekeeping items to take care of to make this really feel like Windows 98. First, let's kick up our resolution and color depth a few notches. And next, we're going to set our background to be a little more appropriate. How about some clouds? Then we adjust our background color and we're set. There. Perfect. Next up is the Sound Blaster Live drivers. And I love how over the top creative went with their presentation, really trying to hammer across that multimedia experience. That said, this is a very long installation, so I'm going to skip through it as I'm installing just about the whole software bundle creative provided with this card. It just wouldn't feel right as a late 90s Windows machine if there wasn't some level of superfluous software and toolbars crammed all over the place. So what is the very first thing you do once your new Windows Sunday machine is all ready to go? Well for me that means taking a dive into the C drive here, go into our Windows directory, then media, and finding our old friend Canyon.mid. Terrific. Anyway, the whole purpose of this computer was of course to play classic games on. So now, without further ado, let's do just that. Motorhead is a game that was released in 1998 by Digital Illusions, a studio now operating under the well-known name of DICE. It features physics that can generously be called, don't worry about it, and a racing game wrapped in, for the time, gorgeous graphics. The gameplay is incredibly fast and fluid, and is able to convey a real sense of speed. Our computer is able to run the game just fine at 1024x768 with all settings maxed out. The music is CDO audio based and features some nice pumping techno. Easily a favorite of mine from back in the day. A game that if you were into the land scene toward the end of the 90s you were very likely familiar with. Unreal Tournament was released in 1999 developed by Epic Games. The fast paced arena combat coupled with many game modes to choose from made it a staple of any multiplayer event. Sporting a wide range of weapons such as the Flak Cannon, Pulse Gun or the mini cruise missile launcher Redeemer, there was something for everyone. Still a game that I always have on hand for land parties. As we can see our computer is able to run this game with no problems. Eat that. Ground Control is a strategy game developed by Massive Entertainment and released in 2000. It is a full 3D real-time strategy game that departed somewhat from the proven formula of the genre. Instead of harvesting resources, building your base and then your army, you are tasked with controlling a small force to accomplish your objective each mission. The units do carry with you from mission to mission, but it provides a faster experience compared to the standard formula. This game does push it a bit for our Voodoo 3 card, being a later game, but it's still able to run it just fine. And we 
One recharging. Enemy infantry destroyed. Enemy attacking command APC. Affirmative. Engaging. Move order received. Understood. I'm on my way. Affirmative. Squad one recharging. Enemy attacking squad one. Enemy in A favorite game of mine, Ignition, came out in 1997, developed by Unique Development, a gaming studio that sadly closed down in the mid-2000s. The game features a terrific arcade-style top-down racing experience with great level design and some silliness mixed in. Comparing this to the more successful Micro Machine series of games gives you somewhat of an idea of what to expect. Fun playing in solo mode or over land with friends, it is sure to provide plenty of entertainment. While our computer can run this game just fine, I will mention that the game uses some very non-standard resolutions, making capturing this footage uh, interesting. I may cover that in a future video showing this game more in depth. I probably don't need to do much of an introduction for another entry into the landmark Quake series. In 1997, Quake 2 switched it up and left behind the mismatched mystical Buffwood Guns setting of the first game and put you into the boots of a marine trying to invade an alien world. There are plenty of guns, explosions, seekers to find, as well as a rocking soundtrack. Really all you need from a Quake game. Being a bit of an earlier game, it has no problem running in our machine. <laughs> This is of course far from all the games you could enjoy in this machine, but it gives you a bit of a bite-sized sample. Perhaps you have fond memories of specific PC titles from the late 90s that would be appropriate for this computer. If you do, feel free to leave a comment below as I'd love to hear about them. And that puts an end to this build. We now have a great retro gaming rig ready for anything the late 90s could throw at it. I will mention that we didn't touch on DOS compatibility for this setup, which I think it's a bit outside the intent of this machine. That said, it certainly can do so with even the Soundmaster Live card having DOS drivers available. However, stay tuned for a more DOS-focused build in a future video. This is Rick, and thank you very much for watching. And remember everyone, stay classy.